All right, so let's talk about equilibrium of rigid body. All right, up until this point, we were working on static equilibrium of just particles, right? The sum of the forces are equal to zero. Now, if you remember the difference between a particle and a rigid body, a rigid body has a size and shape to it. With that being said, the sum of the forces equal, equaling zero does not tell the full story of what we're looking for in a rigid body. So we must add other components to it to make sure the problem is in equilibrium. All right, so let's switch over to the desktop view. So like I said, for the particle, we just said the sum of the forces are equal to zero. All right, but if we have a rigid body, some sort of shape and size, right? Then we have moments also on the body, right? There are forces being applied a certain distance away from other points. So we must have that the sum of the moments are also equal to zero, okay? So these are the two conditions that we need for equilibrium of a rigid body. Okay, with that being said, we're gonna have two types of problems. We're gonna have 2D problems, so if we have 2D problems, we have the sum of the forces in the X direction equaling zero, sum of the forces in the Y direction equaling zero, and then the sum of the moments about any point, right? An arbitrary point on the figure are equal to zero. We can pick any point and take the moments about that point and those moments should be equal to zero. Now, as we expand this to 3D, it gets more complicated. Because likewise, we have the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the z direction equal to zero. Now, if we talk also about the moments, we have the sum of the moments around the x-axis equals zero, the sum of the moments around the y-axis are equal to zero, and the sum of the moments around the z-axis are equal to zero. So the, th the 3D formulation of equilibrium of rigid body here, that includes six equations here. So it gets a little complex and a little long if we're solving these problems uh, in three-dimensional situations. Okay. Furthermore, we're gonna have certain supports supports on our rigid bodies. So these are three of the most common supports that we'll see in two dimensions. So we have the roller, the pin joint, and the fixed joint here. So all of these are some sort of supports. Now when we draw our free body diagram, we take this geometry off of the, off of the diagram and add in forces depending on the type of support. So for a roller joint here, we have an upward force, just an upward force, Fy. Now we can label this By, Ay, whatever we want, but it's just in the Y direction. All right, for a pin joint, all right, it, a pin will constrain movement in both the X and Y direction, but since it's a pin and it can turn smoothly, there are no constraints in terms of the rotation. So for a pin joint, we just have forces in the y direction and a force on the x direction, okay? And lastly, we have a fixed joint here. And the fixed joint does, it constrains things in the x and the y direction, but it also constrains things in terms of rotation. So a, on a fixed joint, we have the y direction, we have the x direction, and then we also have a moment here, okay? So when we do our free body diagrams, that's, this is what we need to do. If we see any of these types of supports, we need to take those off and apply these forces here. And tables 5.1 and 5.2 in your book have more detail about this.